because of you that we're able to do this. For those who are uninitiated, this is an interactive process. We ask you to ask questions. We ask you to participate. And where you think I'm wrong, call me out because that's the only way we're going to be able to get through this together. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about are you covered by insurance during COVID-19? And uh, as usual, um, we're going to be briefly talking about the uh, next page, please. Um, Uh, we're going to be talking about the weekly economic update. We're going to be doing the pandemic update, and we're going to be talking about insurance coverage during update during the update. And uh, we have a guest with us today, who I'll be introducing shortly, who is an expert in the in the insurance business. Uh, particularly, Oppenheim Law was founded in 1989. We've been serving South Florida for 30 years, as well as our title company, Weston Title, uh, and we have. Uh, gone through this an economic crisis like this just 12 years ago, and uh, we had no idea that we'd be basically going through something that was much more complicated and intricate than what we thought was was insanity just back in 2008. And again, we hope that the skills that we picked up then and the experiences will help us all get through this together this time around. Uh, I want to, of course, uh, first of all, introduce Ryan Collins, our guest speaker. Ryan is uh, is the owner of Brightway Insurance of Sunrise, Florida, and of Chatham, New Jersey. Ryan has 20 years of experience in, in the Florida and insurance in, 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 the, in the insurance industry, and he's been uh, licensed in Florida for 20 years, and he has a 220 brokerage license. I've known Ryan for several years, as has Ellen, my wife and partner, who joins me uh, in this process every week, as well as Paula, who always assists us, and of course, Jeff, my partner, and, and me, our senior associate, all of whom are very integral in putting these, these meetings and, and webinars together. Last week, we talked about uh, the guidelines and procedures to safely reopen in the Tri-County area in, in, in Florida and how to reduce civil liability. This week, we're gonna discuss how insurance can, in theory, help you get through this process and what, what to expect from, from the insurance industry. Um, next page, um, we're gonna do a weekly economic update, which I wanna go through real quickly right now. Uh, what we're finding is, is that people are obviously still driving a lot more. Gas stations are being used a lot more. Uh, cafes, outdoors, people are using. Uh, but at the same time, people are traveling less on airplanes. And our consumption is continuing to evolve and change as this process continues. For example, in Dade and, 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 and soon in Broward County, once again, indoor dining will, will not be allowed. Uh, most health clubs are being closed down in Dade County and Broward is going to announce something quite similar. At the same very moment in time, we also have an announcement from the governor that schools are going to try and reopen in person. Uh, and we're gonna see how that's gonna work with, with the state being uh, literally one of the number one hotspots, uh, not just in the country, but in the world right now. But the idea is to try and get students somehow back into some sort of normalized environment. How that's gonna happen, how that's gonna protect teachers as, as well as students and make sure that the schools don't become some super spread environment is, is something that we are all gonna to have to see. But if we go through the numbers, it'll be very interesting. Uh, in terms of vacation spending, what we're finding particularly is that Airbnb is doing quite well. Rental cars, people are using rental cars to drive instead of fly. Hotels are coming back, but there's a dramatic decrease from where we were just in February uh, previously. And airlines, of course, while they're slightly coming back are still well, well below uh, uh, where they were, and a, and a major airline, El Al Airlines, that, that is a, a sovereign airline of the state of Israel, announced that they are, have furloughed everyone as of this morning, and they and they are no longer flying for the time being. And I'm sure we'll, we'll continue to hear other airlines that will not be able to survive, or at least will not be flying during uh, this, this period of time. Next slide. Uh, foot traffic's very interesting. When we look at foot traffic, we see that uh, uh, in certain states, uh, traffic is, is coming back, and uh, particularly places like New York or, or other places where, where people typically are, are walking in Florida, of course, uh, it's not going to come back as much because people don't walk as much to begin with. But uh, we are seeing that people are getting out more, and that, and that is a positive, positive sign. Next, next page. Uh, bare necessities, gas stations off the charts. Uh, we're seeing people are coming back to malls slightly. Car dealers are coming back. Uh, and in all, people uh, are still at around 20 or 30 percent, about 20 percent below where they were uh, prior to this, this crisis. Um, supermarkets are no longer the main source of food. The cooking trend may be coming to an end. Food delivery has uh, almost doubled and has remained at that level. Online grocers has, has dropped because people are probably sick and tired of eating at home and cooking. Meal kits are remaining quite high. Fast food is, is basically where it was before the crisis. 
supermarkets uh, have gone up, but then I think have come down a little bit. And then restaurants have come back primarily because of takeout and those restaurants that were briefly able to offer sit down in, in, in room dining. But the in room dining is a major, major concern as is any indoor kind of air conditioning. One of the theories that we're seeing here is that while the South is taking the hit right now, the question is why? And the answer is because we're indoors. What is special about indoors? The answer is obviously air conditioning. What is special about air conditioning? It's probably, and some, some people are suggesting that it could be a little bit like a Legionnaire's disease, that, that it is through the air conditioning systems and the HVAC systems that are both used up North during the winter and in the South during the summer are spreading the, the virus more than, than, than anything. And what's really interesting, if we look at other countries like, like Europe, why are they doing particularly well? People saying, well, because they're wearing face masks. That may be it, but it may also be that many of these countries do not have central air conditioning systems. And because of that, their windows are open more and they and have a much more ventilated indoor environment. We have very sealed environments. Uh, restaurants are like that. Cruise ships are like that. Uh, nursing homes are like that. Airplanes are like that, where you have these sealed environments that are using circulated central air. And with the new studies coming out that, that, that the virus is, is aerosoled and that it, it is airborne, uh, we need to be focusing very carefully about our indoor environments. And that's why Dade County, in fact, is closing uh, their restaurants indoors. And it's gonna be very interesting to see how we can ventilate our school systems uh, if we're really gonna reopen the schools. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how that works. Next page. So pandemic update, uh, Florida virus, 200,000 cases, 3,000 deaths. If we look at it, the death rate is dropping. We're at about one and a half percent. It looks like if in fact the death rate uh, remains what it is and that the number of cases continue to rise, particularly with those people that are young, average age in Florida is 21 years old, the reality is the death rate will continue to drop and it will probably end up in the one half to 1% rate. We also have new mitigating ways to, to deal with the disease. There have been some people who probably wouldn't have passed away in April, uh, a famous uh, Broadway star who, who passed away. Likely is that had he gotten COVID today, he probably would have been fine. He had no pre-existing conditions, but the medical community didn't know what worked and how to, how to deal with it. Next page, please. Um, and what does it say here? Doing very well. Well, viruses is, is continuing to spread and, uh, you know, it, as we indicated, it's airborne. And so office spaces, as we talked about in restaurants, all these things are gonna be big issues, especially with, with school re possibly reopening up. Next page. Uh, what everyone really wants is Ryan Collins from Bright White. Ryan, are you there, buddy? Can we get you on? Yes, I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't give right. anyone's time going through the intro here. But let, let, let's go on and talk about what how insurance is gonna, get us through this, what we can expect, what we can expect, and, uh, and, and how it's affecting your business in general. Yeah, certainly. So I, we'll talk about a couple different things today. One of them is everybody's got the question on business interruption insurance and how COVID has impacted that and what people's coverages look like during the COVID crisis with business interruption insurance. In addition, we'll talk about general liability uh, a huge piece is rate increases. So not only are we facing kind of unprecedented uh, economic times, but what are the insurance companies doing during this time? And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as well as some of the underlying trends that aren't COVID related when it comes to homeowners insurance. And then finally, we'll talk about uh, the new flood maps associated with uh, FEMA and they've redrawn the flood maps and we'll talk briefly about that. So next slide. Great. So uh, there's a huge question right now um, about business interruption insurance. And business interruption insurance is, is just that. It's, it's insurance for if your business um, is interrupted for any particular reason. Obviously, it's full of exclusions, things that it does not cover for. Uh, but it's there to really make up for the loss in revenue during the time that you are down. Uh, and so I used an example here of this is a, an actual um, uh, real life specific example from Tampa. There's a, there's a company up there called Counterculture that uh, is a restaurant um, and they actually have been pushing to get covered for the shutdown that they've been facing. Um, they had two things happen. One was that during the, the pandemic, they actually had some kitchen workers get sick and from COVID and they closed uh, resultants of that 
but then they were also remained closed because of the mandated pieces uh, by the government. Um, and so there's, there's a question at play here. Most business interruption policies do not cover uh, viruses and bacteria. They're, they're, clear, they're clearly excluded. I haven't come across a policy that we've written yet where they've been included uh, in terms of coverage. So they're, they're specifically excluded. Um, however, the way that counterculture has been playing it from a litigation perspective is actually that it's not, it's not the, the COVID that has closed them down, but it is the government that has closed them down. And so that's been the approach. It's, it's hotly litigated right now. It's really tightly contested. Honestly, you see um, the, the approach from both sides. And uh, so really what it comes down to is it's possible that the coverage could exist um, from the government intervention, but there's obviously no valid argument for the time it was shut down due to the employees contracting COVID. So just be, uh, yeah, go ahead. What I want to say is, you know, people are seeing a lot of ads on Facebook for lawyers trolling for clients to, to bring business interruption uh, lawsuits. Now, there are different policies that state different things. Not all of them have exclusions for viruses, but a lot right. of them like, say that, that the business interruption has to be through a physical manifestation, through some yeah. sort of physical event, thought of like a fire, a flood, a hurricane. And so the question is, uh, and while there are exceptions for bacterial items such as mold, um, many did not in the old case, in, in the old policy specifically exclude viruses. So in those cases, the question is, is there a physicality component of the virus? Can you say that even though you can't see it, it's still in fact physical? I mean, what, you know, just because it's a micron, that doesn't make it non-physical. It just means we can't see it. So the question is, how are the courts and judges going to evaluate what the uh, event has to be for, for there to be a physical event to, to define a, a, a casualty? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And so that's a, it's just, it's right now, if you go Google business interruption in COVID, you're going to get, the first thing will be a bunch of ads at the top for attorneys, because again, it is hotly litigated right now. They'll be interested in to see how this plays out. But if you do have questions on their business interruption insurance, take a look at your policy and look for any exclusions that you might have on virus and bacteria. If you can't find any exclusions, you might have just a completely clear path to, to getting that coverage. But let me assure everyone right now that if you're up for renewal and you will be starting anytime, every month, there, you know, 10, 12 percent of every policy is renewed. By the end of the year, there will not be a new policy that is issued that doesn't have the term virus pandemic as an exclusion. And that's always been my beef. And, and don't take this personally, Ryan, is yeah. that whenever you get insurance, you're always being insured for something that 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 doesn't include the peril that that that, that is going to occur. So even even for example, uh, some of the destruction that occurred in major cities due to, due to uh, the social unrest. In some cases, you know, if it's considered a, a riot, it's okay. But if it's social insurrection, it's it's not okay. You know, and so you know, it it's it, it's really interesting how the insurance industry always tries to not pay when you pay these policies, and and it's the same thing that when they do pay, they're going to cut you off anyway. And so it, it's always like heads. I lose, tails, you win, you know. And when you get right. to flood and, 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 and water damage, it's, it's going to be a perfect example of, of what I'm talking about. At some point, right. the question is, why don't you just go bare and, and stick the money in the bank for 10 years and, and, and you'd be at the same place? Right. Yeah. There's a, and there's, and for those people that have the ability to do it, self-insuring is a great option in today's market. So uh, next slide. Yeah. All right. Great. So then the other, the other really piece to this puzzle is we talked about the benefit that you, that you might be able to obtain as a business owner uh, because of the COVID crisis. However, there's the third party element of general liability and, and COVID. And, you know, uh, Roy talked about it best. There's, you know, there's some inherent liability to opening your, your business in today's world. Um, and everybody just should be aware of what their policy allows and what it doesn't allow. Um, so some policies have communicable disease exclusions right off the bat. So you want to check your policy to see if you're in something that prohibits it uh, altogether. Um, some insurers are also relying on organic pathogen exclusions. So this is um, like a good example is mold, but sometimes they have very broad definitions like microbes. And um, there's, there's even like a scientific 
uh, kind of conflict today about the definition of a virus as a microbe or not as a microbe. So uh, if it's really kind of, you're gonna be able to find a witness on either side or an expert on either side that's going to be able to, to be your smoking gun in a, in a lawsuit, but you don't wanna to have to be there. Um, so check your policy to, to see what the wording looks like around that. There's obviously pollutant exclusions that exist um, that, that insurance companies are gonna use in defense. And then obviously there's a huge part, which is the expected intended exclusion, right? That is if a business owner could have foreseen that this was going to occur and could have done something to prevent it, um, the insurance company is going to look to deny that claim. So this is where you as a business owner, or if you know a business owner, just make sure that they're, they're doing everything that they can to try to get in front of these types of exclusions in the case that something does come up. Um, these pictures are actually good examples of what some businesses are doing to get in front of that, uh, that issue, you know, making sure that everybody has social distancing spacing and making sure that um, there's not an issue with kind of uh, putting people in a position where they can get sick. So I would just say if you own a business, like say a gym, a health club, healthcare, restaurant, check for your exclusions, take your precautions. So not directly in, you know, part of the COVID piece here, but certainly a part of what's happening in the world today um, is that insurance, especially in Florida, insurance rates are going through the roof. These articles right here are all from this year uh, a variety, there, it's basically, again, you can Google it, Florida uh, home insurance rate increases, and you're gonna see it everywhere. Rate hikes are uh, happening across the board. We're looking, we're seeing rate hikes as much as 60%, certainly 20 to 30% is probably a uh, conservative average. Um, this is, a lot of this is driven by IRMA, uh, believe it or not. The statute of limitations on IRMA damage uh, comes up this September. So what you're seeing is a, there's a push to try to get those losses in. Um, and uh, that means that it's going to increase claims frequency. Uh, and then subsequently, there's a ton of litigation that's, uh, that's happening right now. Uh, litigation from every source, uh, whether it be water damage, whether it be uh, you know, uh, liability claims like slip and falls, there's a lot of litigation. You see uh, in, a, in a later slide, I'll actually talk about how there's been basically uh, twofold increase, threefold increase really in litigation over the course of the last uh, five, 10 years uh, across the market. Um, and so when that's all happening, what happens is insurance companies are finding it hard to make money. Uh, and I know that sounds crazy. I mean, everybody thinks the insurance companies are, they are making money hand over fist, but in, in fact, we had three carriers go out of business this year in, in Florida. Uh, that's the most I've ever seen in a single year go insolvent. And so when that happens, it becomes a hard market and it tightens underwriting guidelines. People pull out of venues. And because of that, you're left with um, kind of an unhappy monopoly, right? Where citizens is maybe the only player in town or maybe there's one or two. Um, it just makes for very difficult uh, conditions to make matters worse because uh, we're mostly domestic in terms of Florida carriers, meaning that they're all kind of home raised here from Florida, they're, they're small to moderate sized carriers. They are not offering discounts, credits, or forgiveness for financial hardships that are related to COVID. So if you're already having financial difficulty because of the situation with COVID, or you know people that are, they shouldn't expect that their insurance company is going to help them. Uh, in addition to that, they can probably expect that rates will increase at the time of their renewal kind of putting salt in the wound. Uh, very difficult situation we're in right now with the rates here in Florida. Very interesting. Let, let's, let's move on. We have some questions, but I think we're having trouble pulling up, pulling up the questions. So we'll, uh, we'll keep going till we're able to. No pull. problem. Uh, I'll be. Uh, here, here. I got one. Yeah. Uh, do, any, uh, oh, do any business insurance uh, policies cover pathogens? Uh, yeah, certainly. There's there's wording in every policy. You can basically find policies out there that do cover it. I'll tell you now that Scottsdale, who's a large carrier, uh, does absolutely does not cover it. Um, that's pretty well known at this point. Um, there's, you know, like I said, it, Travelers does have versions of it that do include it. It just is carrier to carrier and depending on what kind of business you're in. 
Right. And also, if you do get government benefits, wouldn't that be deducted from your business interruption insurance? Because oh, you absolutely, have, yes. that is a collateral source that you've received funds from, which you'd have to deduct from what your damages are when you, when you do the yeah. math. Yes, absolutely. You basically have to submit your books before and after and be able to show the loss. Right. So if you have, if you don't even have a loss because of the PPP or the idle right. or whatever else is out there, <clears throat> you, you may not even have a claim, even if you are covered. One more right. question, Ryan. Uh, do you think that waivers are the best way to protect businesses if insurance does not cover? Or even if insurance does cover, does that show you that at least you gave, you know, you tried yeah. to mitigate the damage uh, from a liability perspective? Yeah, I'm definitely not a contract attorney uh, or a liability or an attorney at all. I don't play an attorney on TV. But I will tell you that uh, having a, a waiver does not hurt your case. Um, it certainly, if anything, just is that extra layer of protection that I think is necessary in today's world. Right. Uh, let me move on to assignment of benefits, which I know you want to talk about. Again, I'll be super brief on this. Uh, basically, a huge increase in the number of litigated suits between 2013 and 2018. You're looking at 27,000 uh, lit litigated cases uh, in 2013 to 89,000 in 2018. It's just, it's a, uh, it's a plaintiff's market right now. Um, it has been. That's the way that the policies have been set up. And unfortunately, every loophole is being kind of uh, beaten on right now. Um, and you can see that the water damage claims have been a huge part of that. So the insurance companies in a position where they can't seemingly win, they, they haven't found a way to win right now in the water damage piece. So instead, what they're doing, is they're removing it altogether from your policy or creating a sublimit where there's uh, only $10,000 uh, of, of potential um, coverage for you there. Uh, so that's a big piece to be aware of because a lot of carriers, a lot of them are doing that action at renewal, which means that you already have a policy. Perhaps you had full water damage coverage. Check your renewal paperwork because it's typically, yeah, that's where you see the endorsement where it's changed, reduced or removed. Uh, so check your, check your paperwork there. I can tell you offhand, I had two policies, my own policies, where that water damage, both business and personal, where water damage was removed altogether from the policy. Wow. So, I mean, when that happens, you might as well just increase your deductible because at that point, the only thing you're really insuring for is a fire. catastrophic fire or your yep. roof being ripped off during a hurricane. I mean, you're not exactly you know, right. uh, insuring for, for some of the small or mid-sized type claims that, that seems to be pecking the, uh, the insurance companies to death here. Yeah, right, exactly right. There, you're gonna continue to see that. Uh, you're gonna continue to see where um, insurance companies remove coverages. Um, and as long as the state allows it, that's what they're going to do because they, they're trying to get control of the market right now. Right. That's, it's very interesting. And of course, assignment of benefits, I think there has been some new legislation to try and limit that, but that's right. where the lawyers and, and the contractors assign the benefit from the homeowner to themselves so they can then get paid for all the work that they've done on the house. And then they bring in, uh, I, I guess an appraiser uh, who assesses the damage and, and of course the damage then gets trumped up uh, legitimately or otherwise uh, yep. and the claim gets, gets enriched as, at the end of the day. Right, yeah. Um, and then the last piece here is uh, just to be aware, uh, flood maps, um, the, the FEMA floodplains are all being uh, redrawn right now. They've actually, the redraw has really been complete. It's, they started um, last year and they, really started releasing them in January, February of this year. Broward even had some kind of town hall meetings to discuss the changes. Um, in terms of like what you can expect, Weston, the Weston area is, uh, is really untouched. It remains X zone for the most part, which is um, uh, not a flood, not a floodplain. Uh, this chance of a, of a hundred year storm is like less than, than 1%. Uh, however, if you're east of 95, it's basically all a floodplain now at this point. Uh, and be prepared for not only paying for flood insurance, but having those rates actually go up from what they are today. So even if you have active flood coverage, in all likelihood, the rates will go up. And that's just simply because um, FEMA was, uh, uh, you would say, under-reserved um, for the amount of risk that they, were, they had taken on. Um, the, uh, one of the things that I was just sharing with Roy earlier today was that Cape Coral is the most at-risk city in the country in terms of a flood risk. They have 90,000 homes that are currently uninsured or underinsured 
for where they're located and their risk of a hundred year flood. So uh, that's just, you know, obviously on the other side of Alligator Alley, but uh, we have a lot of those risks here in Florida as we stick out, you know, the peninsula goes out into this, into the ocean. So just be Brian, aware it's likely going to change. Brian, quick, quick, what's the maximum coverage for flood insurance? Isn't there a cap on it anyway? Yeah, it's $250,000 for the NFIP plan uh, and $100,000 for personal pro personal property contents coverage. So uh, that's the most you can get. You can also get excess flood if you want. Um, however, uh, the 250 is usually adequate uh, depending on the size of the home. So if you live in a condo, for example, and you're on a high floor, while you may have exposure to wind, you really only you really don't have flood damage other than, than it coming from your own uh, uh, utilities or, or from uh, maybe something happening in the building itself. Yeah, your association uh, in a condo has flood coverage nine times out of 10, and that covers the exterior walls and the, the primary construction. Um, so you don't typically, if you're in a condo, you don't typically buy flood insurance. You can always buy it if, you know, you don't, you, if you're not required to, but uh, right. you usually have it. We, we have a few more questions I want to get to if we can, because we only have a few seconds left. Uh, sure. Has force majeure been used successfully yet uh, in general as, as an argument is the question for, uh, uh, in terms of insurance, uh, business interruption, I, primarily, I would think. Yeah, I have, we haven't crossed it down here. I can tell you up north, um, New York, New Jersey is incredibly hot on this right now. Matter of fact, in Times Square, they ran an ad on one of the, uh, the billboards for, I think, a week straight, basically blowing up insurance companies. Uh, and so I can tell you now that this is going to be something that's developing. We're going to find out a lot more as uh, courts resume and as things uh, hit the docket. One of the things some of my insurance friends are telling me is that in the past, Congress sometimes steps in and literally rewrites the policies, yeah. provides a chunk of money to the insurance industry as a form of bailout, and then that yeah. money comes back to the homeowner. And it's a yeah. way of almost distributing money into the community uh, to keep the economy robust. And it's just like you know the way the PPP work for small businesses right. and how the airlines got money, that, that money could go to the insurance industry and, and they have to take it with the provisio that they then have to acknowledge the business interruption claims. And so yeah, you may yeah, you're gonna see that. that. Right. You're and definitely gonna see that. And it's state to state. That's the thing because insurance is all, it's all individual and specific to each state, right? There's not, not a federal governing body. Um, so you're gonna see states, California is a great example where they've already made steps to uh, retroactively rewrite some of the policies to provide business interruption insurance. Right. And then you're gonna have states that do not take that action, maybe states that are more, less uh, small business friendly, uh, more large business friendly, more, you know, that, it, that you're gonna see differences in states based on their, their politics. Right. I was gonna mention California already has done that. So I'm thinking yeah. that maybe there could be a national platform that, that is based on what, what the, the example in California. There's yeah. one more question here. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit about maybe umbrella insurance coverage for people, but is there any other supplemental insurance that you could recommend uh, to homeowners you know, that maybe they're, they're not thinking about? Um, sometimes your company offers service line coverage. Service line coverage basically covers um, the service from you, the main utility to your home. Homeowner's insurance covers the service within your house, so your electrical box, the, um, the, the dra main drain inside your home, but it does not cover the pipes that go from the main service line to your home. So that is something that's typically not covered by either the utility company nor by your personal homeowner's policy. So that is something to look into if, you ever, uh, if, you, if you're ever looking to make sure you're adequately insured, see if you can get that service line coverage. That's a huge one. You know, we're running out of time, Brian, and you know, you've been phenomenal and, and you could go on for hours with me and we could keep talking. Sure. Uh, Brian Collins is from uh, Brightway Insurance. He has an office in New Jersey, an office down here in, 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 in Sunrise. And uh, of course, uh, Oppenheim Law and Weston Title, you all know who we are by now, but we've been doing this 30 years and we're going to continue to be doing this to assist uh, our neighbors, our friends, our family, our community, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, get through this crisis and figure out how we're gonna get, get through this. And, and it's not gonna to end tomorrow. There is light at the end of the tunnel, but all we have to do is remain confident and, and, and 
resilient, and I'm sure we're all going to come out of this stronger and better and have great stories for our grandchildren one day. So Roy Oppenheim, Oppenheim Law, Zoom at noon. See you next week. And again, thanks again, Ryan. Have a great week, everyone. Have a good one.